I've said it before a million times, but I was at a point where I was giving up on Canada. And I was at a point where I thought we were at the point of no return. And you guys have given me hope. All of us hope here. You guys are giving us strength. You guys are keeping us going. And wow, we are one big team, one big national team, you guys. We got trucks coming from the Northwest Territories. I think I told you we got clan mothers coming from the Northwest Territories. We have trucks rolling out of the north of uh, Newfoundland. We got Americans coming to support. I was on the phone with an American last night who is sending his love and support, and he's saying that the entire world is watching us, and they are. The small fringe minority of people who are on their way to Ottawa or who are uh, holding unacceptable uh, views uh, that they're expressing do not represent the views of Canadians who have been there for each other, who know that following the science and stepping up to protect each other is the best way to continue to ensure our freedoms, our rights, our values as a country. grieving because I come here for a peaceful encounter and right now the government and the police them is telling us that we have to leave and they're going to put us in jail. The most important thing is our children to be free. We want our children to grow up healthy and have a free mind. Good morning, Ottawa. I'm an Ottawa resident, long-time Ottawa resident. I'm here with one of our great truckers from the Freedom Convoy, and I'm here to say that no matter what you're getting from the mainstream media or the liars on council and the mayor, please believe me, the city has never been safer. The crime rate's gone down as low as it's been in history. The streets have never been cleaner, and the snow is finally getting shoveled downtown. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you. We appreciate your support. I shook their hands and I spoke to them, asked them where they were from, and uh, did not see any white supremacists or any racists while I was there. It, uh, in contrary, was the opposite. People were coming together, as we should, in such a diverse, multicultural country like Canada. It's being reflected there among these peaceful protesters. Shame on you to the mayor of Ottawa, Doug Ford, 
I cannot believe you are supporting this negative narrative. You say on your Twitter that you're for the people. You're opposite. You are a liar. Justin Trudeau, you are a liar. And I'm not going to sit by idle and allow mainstream media and the federal government to pass along this type of misinformation to my fellow Canadians who are standing up for what is right. To the citizens of Ottawa who are complaining about noise and the inconveniences, that is the price for freedom. They need to be heard. That is why they're making the noise. So this is important because um, the colleges, you know, the licensing bodies for physicians in Canada right now are really going hard at the physicians. They're dictating what, what they can and can't do with their patients. And this is very important because, uh, you know, that's obviously a problem. But one thing I want uh, people to understand is for those physicians that don't agree with the vaccine mandates and all the things that are going on right now, uh, in, in the context of medicine and how it's being practiced. What I want you to understand is, I understand that many of you are afraid. And that we see that. We see that among the police. While there's police officers who are too afraid to speak up because they're afraid they're going to lose their job. Well, they're not. They have fellow police officers who are losing their job. Well, for the, our, the physicians that are out there, and I am working with many, many physicians right now, if you're afraid to speak up right now because you're worried about losing your job, you need to keep in mind that while you don't speak up while you refuse to speak up you have many many colleagues who are trying to speak up or are and are actively speaking up and losing their jobs having their licenses pulled or their licenses limited and canadians all over need to understand right now if you are not currently part of the solution then you are part of the problem it's not okay to stay silent and not stand up right now we need Canadians all over, especially physicians, especially among the physicians. If you don't believe in what's going on right now, you have to stand up right now and fight for the rights of your patients and for the rights of all Canadians and their freedoms. Because again, if you remain silent now, then you are complicit.
I, 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 I respect you, and I know you do. I'm here. Let it shine. 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 Guys are ready to hey, break into the vehicles. What's the point? We got their glow sticks. Guys, they have another line over here. We We're have coming in. We have two lines of people now. They got forces over here. They got forces over here. You know what's morally right? You've seen what's happened here. We've been nothing but peaceful. We've kept lanes open for emergency access. The ripple effect from the love felt here is going to change humanity on its own. You're going to be on the wrong side of history if you do not stand with us. You have seen how our Charter of Rights has been absolutely trampled on. What was your oath? Stand with us! Stand with us! We're going to have some elections to deal with this stuff. So. Yeah. Thank you, brother. A thousand cops, you're the only one. Thank you, man. Thank you, brother. Thank you for being on this side and not suited up like that. You guys know it's peaceful, man. No. Well, I mean, it's, it's, it's pretty sad, right? So, they, they can't. I don't think they'll be in They can. I had two of them over there to shake my hand. Well, don't take it. It's, well, it's, having, it's having the willpower to actually do it. Safety. We're both wearing gloves. It's not safety. That's a crock of shit. What world are you in? You guys are wearing yellow badges. violence here, nobody accept that part or violence. Nobody here. So, just a lot of exactly what I thought would happen happened. They kettled them and they're going to march them down this way. Come from the side. Uh, elderly lady. Yeah, yeah. Push the lady down. Push the lady down. You guys are awesome. Hey, go trap another lady with a horse. Well, the only people you heard is. Don't let this country become a communist state. Please. 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 All right, everybody's kettled right now. A number of people are being arrested. And they're pushing back pretty hard right now. I'm stuck in the thick of it. Uh, we're being very kettled. We got to keep moving back. Okay, they're pushing us back. Getting aggressive. Up, up. Shit. This guy's getting violent. Wow, this is intense. 
In a rare and aggressive move, Canadian Prime Minister Justin Trudeau invoking the Emergencies Act to crack down on anti-vaccine mandate protests. This move allows the federal government to expand measures to clear the blockades by hundreds of truckers that are disturbing residents and harming the economy. CNN's Paula Newton is live for us in Ottawa with more. These are pretty sweeping powers allowed by this act. Tell us what's happening here, Paula. Yeah, the issue is, will it make any difference, Brianna? And good morning to you. Think about it. This city is in a state of emergency. The province is in is in a state of emergency. Now, Trudeau has called the uh, uh, this a national emergency and has enacted the Emergencies Act. Brianna, the trucks are still here. They're saying they're going to pull licenses, insurance, even freeze bank accounts. They're pushing back very, very hard once again. Wow! Trying to stay back a little bit this time so I don't get a baton to the ribs again. At the intersection of Bank and Sparks, they pushed everybody back to and they're now kettled, as you can see. Oh wow. Yeah. Hey. You guys are gross. With some water? Gross. What does that help? Uh not really. Okay. Yeah. Disgusting is what it is. So uh these guys in the green suits with no badges or no numbers or no names are uh Sarate de Capec police. Those are the guys who were caught. Uh, using agent provocateurs, which you may recall from some of my films, where we filmed them, the agent provocateurs wearing the same police-issued boots as the Quebec police. They pushed back all the protesters, kettled everybody, and started getting rather aggressive. Saw a lot of people getting injured, a lot of people getting pepper sprayed. And they've uh, formed a line again. I'll head up. Holy crap, they got horses in there. I understand your point of view, but we're very emotional. This is our country. I'm so upset. Here come the Praetorian Guards. Never gonna look at a mountain the same way in my life again. Never. Do the right thing. Let's go. Make history. Show up. Make history. Everyone show him love. Everyone spam the chat with love for this officer right here because he's reading all the comments. Everyone's reading. He's reading everyone's comments. Come on! He's reading them, guys. Come on, man. You can do it. Be the first one, and then other people will follow. No, it's a camera. It's a camera, yeah. My people love you, man. Come on. They love you, bro. Cross the line. Can't keep up with the comments that are showing support loves you. Come on. Everybody will follow you. Come on. Hey there, uh, so I'm Constable Aaron Howard, um, coming to you from Ontario, Canada. I'm just, I really wanted to give a shout out to all the truckers. I think what you guys are doing is incredible. Um, you're fighting for our rights and freedoms. 
Hi folks, as a police officer with 21 years of experience, I wanted to take this opportunity and reaffirm my support for the people, the people that I was sworn to serve and protect. I stand with you. I stand for freedom and I support a return to normal. Stay safe and God bless. I'm Danny Wolpert, a former RCMP sniper, supervisor that was regularly tasked with protection of the Prime Minister. Today, on February 14th, we received information from multiple believed reliable sources that firearms may be planted in Ottawa, specifically around the Freedom Convoy, to discredit the protest and to use as a pretext to forcibly remove peaceful protesters. The thing I would like to do for the audience and anyone who's listening, um, and anyone who may listen, that might be of a different opinion than me, is that I'd like to appeal to the humanity of Canadians um, so that to help them understand why so many people, you know, if you look at the current statistics from Public Health Canada, there's still 13% of the 12 and over population in Canada that haven't received a single dose. So the number's quite a bit higher, and I suspect that we only got to that 87% because of a lot of the pressure tactics that are being imposed by the government. Right. Yeah. Um, so, and then within that 13%, you're talking about first responders, scientists, like you mentioned, and, and medical professionals, you know, that are unwilling to comply with these policies and these mandates. And I can assure, I can assure people, like, it's not because we're only concerned with our personal safety and that we have no regard for everybody else. Like that, we've all made a career based on the opposite of that, you know, willingly and repeatedly putting ourselves at risk for others. And I'm totally fine with that, right? Like that, that was, that was the career that I chose, but you know, people like me have put my, put ourselves in, in real physical harm's way in order to serve our communities. First responders, healthcare workers, we've been working throughout this entire period of time, regardless of the associated risk, right? Because the, the population relies on us, um, especially people that are right on the front line. Like, I'm more than willing to put myself at risk for the protection of other people in this country. So I think a lot of people are still under that impression. Well, you know, you need to do your part. Well, people like us do our part all the time, and we have been our entire career. That's right. But there's something going on here with this current situation that just doesn't seem right. You know, and, and ironically, despite those experiences, uh, the same government officials are now trying to take my ability to provide an income for my family away and others like me. Bulford wants to say something. Anyone? Do you have instructions to arrest me? I'm here if you are. Could I get an, an Ottawa police officer or RCMP? Please? I'm here to turn myself in if the police want to arrest me. Back there, and we're not going to push through these guys. You can actually get around if you get down and around these guys. Are over there. Okay, there's a whole bunch of them yeah, right there. there. Okay. Get down that way. Does this feel right to you? I won't be trying. The news says that I'm to be arrested, so I'm here if you want me. Is, is, is that true? Hey, brother, we love you, eh? That's another organizer? Yeah. He's an RCMP, XR and CMP officer. XR and CMP. Yeah. Chris resigned last week. Canada's Prime Minister is pandering to politics by division, stoking anger and fear. The rhetoric he used towards those Canadians who support lifting the mandate adds fuel to the fire. These are not the actions of a Prime Minister. A senior member of the Liberal caucus has publicly criticized his tone, his language and his approach to the pandemic. Will the Prime Minister act like a Prime Minister? Will he listen to the opposition, listen to his own caucus? Will he listen to Canadians? 
or will he continue with this divisive rhetoric? I have a question about vaccine choice and how you want to protect that under the Human Rights Act. I'm wondering how um, vaccine choice, um, how you see that is equal to something like race, gender, sexuality, which we protect because those are not about choices. Well, I guess the way I look at it is that the community that faced the most restrictions on their freedoms in the last year were those who made a choice not to be vaccinated. I don't think I've ever experienced a situation in my lifetime where a person was fired from their job or not allowed to watch their kids play hockey or not allowed to go visit a loved one in long-term care or hospital or not allowed to go get on a plane to either go across the country to see family or even travel across the border. So they have been the most discriminated against group that I've ever witnessed in my lifetime. That's a pretty extreme level of discrimination that we have seen. I don't take away any of the discrimination that I've seen in those other groups that you mentioned, but this has been an extraordinary time in the last uh, year in particular. And I want people to know that I find that unacceptable, that we are not going to create a segregated society on the basis of a, of a medical choice. Yeah, that's right, truckers! <laughs> Small fringe group with unacceptable views coming to a theater near you. <laughs> the center of the storm, center of this volatile occupation. If you listen to Deputy Police Chief Bell today calling it an occupation, slipping up many times where he wanted to say it was a demonstration and correct himself because he's got to be on point with the narrative, with the government, with the bureaucrats. And they're saying, oh, we're working with uh, the three other layers of government. No, they're not working with the truckers. They're not working with the leadership to get this resolved because the politicians have no interest in resolving it. They do not speak for the people. These are compromised assets of be it pharma international communists china themselves i mean let's remember our level four lab had 22 chinese spies going in and out bringing ebola and sars one over to wuhan in 2019 but i guess if it's not on the news none of the zombies know it and really it's just about them insulting your intelligence and hoping you don't understand logic and hoping that you don't understand that we have absolutely no motivation to be violent and that trudeau and his false flaggers have every bit of reason to be false flagging and making us look like we're the worst elements ever and that we're carrying Nazi flags that have never existed, guys. It's up to you. You're the ones under the psychological torture of looking at the internet and looking at all the confidence and there's too many people that haven't thought critically in so long that they see these people on TV and their politicians that they've entrusted all their faith in on bad reasoning. They've got you into an experiment. You took the two shots. They're hoping they have your allegiance forever. We know they don't have your allegiance forever and tons of people here are double vaccinated and they know they made a mistake. So it's a moment of panic. They're hoping to just use a crackdown and get 1,800 extra officers in here. Uh, Deputy Bell said that the morale is challenged of his officers and they're exhausted. Yes, I guess many of them have been going into the ICUs with uh, a rotator cuff issues from all the high fives they've been offered and all the love that they've experienced may be causing them some distress because they're used to communists who are normally trying to give them heck for arresting any criminal because, hey, everyone's got an excuse and we hate police. That's the old world. We don't hate police and they know it. It's incredibly awkward for these orders from the top to be carried out by patriots on the ground. Will they do it? We don't know, but they don't plan on pursuing a route that gives us our freedom back. They plan on pursuing a route that continually provokes us to the point where they can remove us with force. Well, guys, we're here to be peaceful. You do what you have to do, and you rest with your own consciences on the choices you make. The Health Agency of Canada confirmed media reports just before Christmas that it had secretly accessed location data for 33 million mobile devices to monitor the movement of Canadians during COVID-19. That number represents roughly 87% of the population who were spied on without any knowledge that the government was accessing their data. Public Health Agency of Canada officials were forced to admit this had occurred after a request for proposal was published with a call for interest in continuing a program of collecting data for up to five more years. They made the decision in a cabinet meeting on the Sunday evening of February 13th. And on the Saturday and the Sunday of that weekend, 
The borders had opened at Coots and Windsor. There was no border closures. And over that same weekend, myself and other uh, people involved with the Freedom Convoy had negotiated a deal at the initiation of Mayor Watson of the City of Ottawa to move the trucks and the protest vehicles out of downtown, consolidate on Wellington, and uh, and uh, bring the downtown back to normal. And uh, so, in my view, and I think the evidence is going to show that the, it wasn't justified, there was no need for it. And the Emergencies Act's a pretty dramatic tool, to say the least. Uh, what the Emergencies Act does is it allows the government to interfere in your life without going through the normal due process. So many of my clients, many of those people involved in the Freedom Convoy, had their bank accounts frozen, they were unable to buy groceries, they were unable to put gas in their vehicles, their credit cards stopped working, they were unable to take money out of their bank accounts, their mortgage payments bounced, and so on. Uh, the order issued by the federal government, by the Deputy Prime Minister Freeland, also ordered insurance companies to cancel all of the insurance policies, including life insurance, mortgage insurance, vehicle insurance, and in, uh, ordered the securities companies to liquidate any investments that Canadians had who were on this list. So these are dramatic powers to isolate Canadians from normal living uh, and put them in a virtual jail cell financially. And in addition, what a lot of people don't understand is that under the Emergencies Act, it also gives um, the federal government powers to intrude into areas of provincial jurisdiction. It gets to override provincial government's rights. So it's a very significant tool. We've only used it historically when there's been a world war, like World War I, World War II, and then the uh, infamous FLQ crisis uh, in Quebec where there was murders and kidnappings. So um, it's, it's, this is a very dangerous precedent. If the conditions that were on the ground here uh, were uh, all it takes, then we've set a very dangerous precedent in terms of a government's ability to overreach and Canadians of their rights. The case is right now that uh, are telling us that there is uh, uh, a protection against uh, transmission of the disease. There is no variant that we have identified that escapes the protection of our vaccine. Yes, COVID to come now with a treatment of 90% effectiveness, you know, personally makes me a lot very proud about uh, it. And we know that um, the three, the two doses of the vaccine offer very limited protection, if any. The three doses with a booster, they offer reasonable protection. Again, it is necessary a fourth boost right now. The, the protection that you are getting from the third it is uh, good enough, actually quite good for hospitalizations and deaths. It's not that good against infections, but it doesn't last. If you don't get vaccinated, you're antisocial. This is what the Dutch Prime Minister and Health Minister told us. You don't get vaccinated just for yourself, but also for others. You do it for all of society. That's what I said. Today, this turned out to be complete nonsense. In a COVID hearing in the European Parliament, one of the Pfizer directors just admitted to me, at the time of introduction, the vaccine had never been tested on stopping the transmission of the virus. This removes the entire legal basis for the COVID passport. The COVID passport that led to massive institutional discrimination as people lost access to essential parts of society. I find this to be shocking, even criminal. Voor u, mevrouw Smal, heb ik de volgende vraag waar ik een duidelijk antwoord op wil. En I will speak in English so there are no misunderstandings. Was the Pfizer COVID vaccine tested on stopping the transmission of the virus before it entered the market? If not, please say it clearly. If yes, are you willing to share the data with this committee? And I really want a straight answer, yes or no, and I'm looking forward to it. Thank you very much. Um, regarding the question around, um, did we know about stopping humanization before um, it's entered the market? No. Uh, these, um, you know, we had to really move at the speed of science to really understand what is taking place in the market. realize that I've been speaking up about this and I've been expressing concerns for two years now 
A lot of you don't realize, I, I was interviewed by W5. I was interviewed on the West Block. I was interviewed by Global News. I was interviewed by CBC National News. They were coming to me. They wanted to hear my opinion. Now, none of them will talk to me ever. I haven't changed. They're the ones that changed. The world has been flipped upside down. All I've been doing is the job that I've been asked to do and that you as taxpayers paid me to do from the very beginning. I want to say something. This is, this, I am, I, this is horrible. These people haven't shown up. I'm a professional, they're professionals. They need to realize this is actually their job. This is actually, you're paying them. They, 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 wouldn't, they wouldn't even respond to us. We didn't even receive the, uh, the, the respect of even being responded to. The, 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 the attitude that, that our public health officials have and the leaders, the, the power brokers, when it comes to public health, uh, this, is, this is disgusting. We wouldn't accept this from elementary school children, this kind of behavior. And you have to start asking the question, how good are your champions? What do they What do they actually have stepping in the arena? Why? All those that you, you want to attack us and you want to push this narrative, you want to say we're wrong, where are your champions to back you up? Exactly. You yeah, exactly. You don't have them. And this is frustrating. This is frustrating for me as a scientist, okay? Because what you need to understand is, and, 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 and this is coming from the top down, from our, our, like our prime minister. I'm sorry, it's an embarrassment. You know, we have the right to ask these questions of these individuals. That's the whole point. As exactly. the Canadian public has the right to have these questions asked. And people have to start wondering why are these leaders, including our prime minister, ignoring these questions, refusing to answer these questions.